Thank you to Simthic, accessible via sim.gg, for the weapon stats used in making this video. Link in the description. Hello! This is yet another entry into a series I have been calling Final Meta, an exploration into the infantry weapons in Battlefield V following its final content release. This video covers the range-flexible medium machine guns, the S2-200, MG-34, and M1919 A6. These are the MMGs you use when you prioritize being able to engage more broadly in terms of ranges, allowing the user to engage in more open areas more effectively rather than just close quarters, while still generally being close range oriented weapons. When it comes to the combat role, I suggest the machine gunner combat role. The machine gunner combat role suits all of the MMGs notably well, being that their high rate of fire and large magazines permit you to effectively suppress and mark enemies for your team, and that they generally don't work well with the engineer combat role as they are not particularly mobile weapons. In terms of sights, for the build of the S2-200, I'm going to advise the iron sights, primarily to maximize the zoom level. For the M1919A6, either the irons or AA sights should be fine, though generally I prefer the extra zoom of the irons. For the MG-34, the irons are somewhat obscuring of your vision so I advise the anti-air sights in this case. For my gadget selection, I suggest the same setup as the bullet hose MMGs, firecrackers, ammo crate, and AT mines. This setup functions largely exactly the same. Firecrackers both draw attention near you, but divert focus in the wrong direction, allowing you to get the jump on your lured opponents, and the crate works to effectively provide an endless supply of them. AT mines work best as a passive anti-vehicle tool. Since MMGs work poorly while on the move, active anti-vehicle gadgets are not particularly good synergistically. To maximize your AT mine laying potential, remember to grab an additional mine from your ammo crate first before refilling at a larger ammo box, and to grab an additional mine from your existing box before placing a new one, which you will be able to retrieve another mine from immediately. In smaller infantry focused maps, my suggestion for the M1919A6 and the MG34 change to incendiary grenade, ammo crate, and AP mine. Use the incendiary grenade to cover for the MMG's longer reloads if you actually run dry. For the S2-200, I change the grenade to the impact grenade as the S2-200 has the shortest reload of any MMG. And while the reloads are far more frequent, you gain little from throwing an incendiary grenade to cover just one of them. In terms of sidearms, I largely suggest the Model 27, as it will provide you essentially an alternative primary weapon for you when you need to cross more wide open spaces with your team. The MMGs make for poor long range weapons, because being on the move will largely demolish their accuracy, and trying to engage enemies on the fly by stopping to begin firing ultimately takes far too long and will likely just result in you losing every firefight. The Model 27 can fill in that gap. That said, the M1912 can make for a decent sidearm in the case of smaller maps. The melee weapon I suggest is a knife. The knife ultimately works the best as a dedicated weapon in comparison to the other two options and comes with the widest assassination angles, useful for maintaining a stealthy flank. For my suggested upgrade trees, I generally still advise the light bolt upgrade, because while these MMGs are more capable of longer ranged fights, their stationary nature makes them a poor fit for wide open areas, as you will likely be picked off by head shooting snipers once you are stationary and ready to fire. For the S2-200, I suggest right, left, right, resulting in recoil buffer, flashless propellant, light bolt, and high velocity bullets. You might notice the first three upgrades are the same as the ones I've given for the bullet hose MMGs, giving you a functional close range powerhouse. But instead of needing to concern yourself with the reload speed or the overheating with the last upgrade, you get a bolster of the bullet velocity, enhancing your ranged capabilities 
that you can further take advantage of with the S2-200's semi-automatic firing mode. For the MG34, I suggest left, right, left, resulting in recoil buffer, chrome lining, double drum magazine, and light bolt. My reasoning is that recoil buffer is ultimately going to be more useful both in close range and long range in comparison to high velocity rounds, in this case due to the relatively high rate of fire making recoil itself fairly intense. And in general, while the MG34 is more capable than other options at longer ranges on average, you still want to try and restrict your use of the weapon to closer quarters, rendering high velocity bullets particularly less useful. As for the middle option, being able to fire full auto for longer periods without overheating is slightly more useful than the addition of 25 more rounds in the magazine, though this is a fairly soft suggestion, and you likely could get away going all left side if you don't tend to do as much suppressive fire. There are two separate builds for the M1919A6 that I'm going to advise. For the standard M1919A6 build, I suggest all left side resulting in recoil buffer, light bolt, flashless propellant, and chrome lining. This is a very standard build that largely plays out as a more accurate and much slower firing version of the alternative build I've previously suggested for the MG42. I largely believe this is the best way to run the gun, and the main benefit you'll get over the MG42 is its overall longer reach due to its accuracy and reduced visual profile stemming from flashless propellant. However, because of the uniquely accurate stats of the M1919A6 among MMGs, a longer ranged build can come in handy. For this, I instead suggest left, right, right, resulting in recoil buffer, improved bipod, ported barrel, and high velocity bullets. While generally speaking, MMGs are best for close range engagements and flanking, if ever there was an MMG where you want to sit in one spot and over a wide and open field and hit targets from long range, this would be the weapon. Just be sure to stick to a window for cover to at least minimize the risk of being sniped. In terms of tactics, my basic suggestion is to largely treat these weapons similarly to bullet hose MMGs. The main difference here is that these have the capability in one way or another to be used decently effectively at longer ranges. In the case of the MG34 and S2200, you have access to something none of the other MMGs have, select fire. If you switch to semi-auto mode, you reduce your overall recoil and can land hits over longer ranges more effectively. This is especially useful if you can manage headshots. This also can further help alleviate the S2200's ammo reliability issues, stemming from its bottom of the barrel magazine size among MMGs. The full automatic mode of the S2200 largely behaves like your standard bullet hose, due to its rate of fire that actually matches the M1922's. You just need to be more careful, as you will spend far more time reloading. The M1919A6 on the other hand, lacks the semi-auto option but its recoil is already fairly low to start with, allowing you to suppress enemies at fairly distant ranges with long bursts. However, it has the slowest rate of fire of any MMG. This means it's a notably slower killer for close range fights, an area where normally MMGs shine. Equipping light bolt mitigates this issue. If you decide instead to capitalize on the gun's long range merits, however, and build it to maximize accuracy, you can fairly effectively use the weapon to rain bullets upon the enemy from afar. You just have to be very smart about your positioning, and in general, not stay in one position for too long. In general, you want to use these weapons when your team has already captured either the center or the points with the closest proximity to the enemy's main spawn, and stick to that point like glue. Defend it, and confuse the enemy with your firecrackers. When it comes to vehicles, you can also use those same firecrackers to spook them or lure them into your mines. If you intend to lure them, simply throw a single firecracker to make the vehicle suspect an easy kill. If you want to scare them off, place a ammo crate down and just start spamming the firecrackers in every direction that has cover to make the vehicle assume it'll likely be quickly overwhelmed so that it flees. Firecrackers are so useful to the MMGs for one simple reason. 
because you really should not be moving yourself at all, you need to draw the enemy in. Infantry hungry for an easy kill will see a red dot and assume they will be able to get the kill streak of their dreams and likely begin rushing in and missing that you've set up shop behind cover and likely falling prey to your trap before they can realize their mistake. Another minor note, don't mag dump or pre-fire the S2200. Its magazine size, stationary nature, and rate of fire all lend itself to being best fired only when you have visual confirmation of a target and halting your fire the moment they go down. I would not apply this same restriction, of course, to really any other MMG. The time to kill of these are generally good if you compare them to other weapon types, but are on the slow end of the spectrum for the MMGs themselves as a category, with the exception of the S2200, which matches the M1922, but sacrifices pre-fire potential with its significantly smaller magazine in exchange for a faster reload speed, slightly lower recoil, and select fire ability. The MG34, of course, also has select fire and even lower base recoil. But its lower rate of fire, larger magazine, and available upgrades turn it into more of a flank-focused gun. The M1919A6 is the best MMG for people who want to reach out to longer ranges. Its time to kill is unimpressive though, and actually getting kills as a result might be difficult, especially since you are a perfect headshot target for a sniper. This is especially true if you actually build it for longer ranges. Make sure to go for headshots. In conclusion, being capable of hosing down platoons of enemies and generally sporting a faster time to kill on average than most other weapon types, but still being able to engage at further distances when necessary makes these excellent all-round defensive weapons. Thank you for watching my video to the end. Please like, comment, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications.